Welcome to Keeping Up with AWS April 2024 edition brought to you by CodeCloud. We're here to talk to you this month about all the latest in AWS developments and how they're transforming in the last 30 days, the cloud ecosystem, particularly with an eye on DevOps. So we're going to cover some new tutorials, some new learning portals, and some tech releases and some blog posts that are all about DevOps and AWS. We kick it off. We're going to start with a tutorial and we're going to talk about using Amazon's Bedrock with Langchain to allow you to create applications. We're also going to talk about GitLab and its new integration with CodeBuild, which is going to enable you to use this as a step through your build steps. Offer a source repository that's going to allow you to play with WebAssembly on AWS EKS, and you can use Terraform for provisioning. This is going to simplify deploying WebAssembly workloads. We're going to talk about this code base just for a second. We're also going to talk about how to improve your capes, your Kubernetes security with Istio and Cilium allowing you to enhance the network and security features of EKS in particular. We're also doing a little follow-up about the Party Rock Gen AI Hackathon. You may remember this from February where I talked about it. We're gonna just very quickly just announce three of the top winners there, which is Parable Rhythm Faith and this thing called Arg Zombie, just highlighting the use of generative AI. We're also gonna talk about EKS, which now is part of the cost and usage report inside of AWS. This allows you to do detailed insights for cost management, but also chargeback. We are gonna dive into a learning portal about generative AI on AWS by a very popular series called Let's Architect. And last but not least, we've been talking about Carpenter almost every single month. This time we're going to talk about how to scale AI workloads with Carpenter and the Elastic Kubernetes service. So join us for this in-depth analysis, Some maybe join us for some discussions. Let's talk about some tutorials. Let's talk about some code. If you like what you see, let us know and send us some comments. Subscribe, hit like. Let's go look at the slides. All right, here we are keeping up with AWS. We're doing some AWS tidbits for April, 2024. Let's talk about the details here. Okay, so I mentioned before that we would talk about building Amazon Bedrock using Langchain basically to build and deploy AI models on top of Amazon Bedrock. So this building with Amazon Bedrock tutorial is an invaluable workshop. Just to give you a quick sample of visual of how this looks. Here we are, right? This is basically a, a self-hosted workshop where you get to kind of use this space and kind of you know make it work for you and, and, and whatever it is that you're focused on. So here, by the way, you've got foundational concept labs, you've got Bedrock, the Bedrock API, it's an introduction to the Lang chain. So it's gonna kind of give you like the primers that you need to kind of get involved, especially if you've never touched Lang chain and you've never touched Bedrock before. So good stuff. All right. Next, GitLab can now be used as a source repository for code build. So this goes with GitHub, this goes with code commit. Right, we, we now have GitLab and, and that's both the hosted version and the enterprise version for understanding that you can now use as a step inside of code build. So this is fabulous. So this, by the way, is just part of the regular kind of sources here. So you can see that they've got code commit, Bitbucket, GitHub, GitHub Enterprise Server, GitLab, and then GitLab self-managed. So they've got both versions for you. Okay, so this is great. So notice this has greatly expanded the sourcing that you can use for go code build. All right. Number three, this is a code base that's gonna allow you to initiate a Kate server and deploy WebAssembly with two particular flavors of shims using Terraform as the base. So if we go take a look at this, you can see here, here's the code base, right? Running WebAssembly and it's got instructions about how to use the repository to set up the EKS cluster. The AMIs, by the way, are using shims for spin and WASM edge. So again, you can actually look at these. These are all container D shims, right? Look at them and it's using Terraform. So if you don't understand shims, and you don't understand WASM and you want to just see what that looks like on top of a Kubernetes cluster and you want to use some Terraform to set it up, this is your repository. Fourth is that we've got Improve Your Case Security with Istio and Cilium. So this is a blog, has it's tagged here. And in this blog, they're basically going to run through and show you how to set up Istio and Cilium, right? These are two popular open source projects. One is basically about a mesh, a service mesh for networking. And the other one is really, it's almost like a wrapper for networking as well. Cilium basically is a container network interface kind of plugin that handles a lot of networking security policies for your Kubernetes clusters. Istio is this amazing service mesh that does things like mutual TLS, rate limiting, circuit breaking, that kind of thing. So Istio is awesome for management of application to application traffic. And then number five, this is a follow-up actually from a previous post that we had done 
done in February, I believe. It may have been March. I probably mentioned it in March. So this is all about the Party Rock Gen A hackathon winners, and there were three at the top. There was like $60,000 in credits that were given away. Notice there were 7,650 registrants that submitted over 1,200 projects across this entire two-month hackathon, if you will. And so here, there were some really great winners here in this space. And again, the top ones, first place was this Parable Rhythm. It's an interactive crime thriller. Think of Choose Your Own Adventure, which you get to kind of type your responses. And then second place was this Mon Creation tool that allows you to create a manga, right? To turn your dreams basically into a manga that you were really looking for. And then there was also Arg Zombie, which is all about how to like unravel the hidden clues. And it's a zombie game that judges you. It's kind of like a psycho thriller, right? And so these were the top three. And notice there's images being generated. It reacts to the things that you input to it. And so these were the top three hackathon submissions for that Party Rock Gen AI hackathon. So just wanted to follow up on that because we did mention it back in February. Absolutely fabulous. Last three is that EKS now supports granular cost visibility. This actually does show up inside just a brief announcement. This is significant because this allows you to break down the cost for Kubernetes and actually allows you to do a little bit better on chargeback, but also get insight on your Kubernetes breakdown by application. So take a look at this, pull down a cost and you should report if you haven't done it, just to see what the EKS breakdown is. Next is discovering Gen AI on AWS. This cute little portal actually, which is actually part of the Lex Architect architecture blog by AWS, is actually just talking about the future. It brings together some videos. It talks about some concepts around like how models are doing and getting larger as the months and years are going by. And then it actually adds uh, a couple of tutorials here including one of the ones we just mentioned, which is the building with Amazon Bedrock and LangChain. It also has generative AI on Amazon SageMaker. It gives access to the Party Rock Lab. So there's a couple of really great pieces here that you probably want to explore if you haven't done any generative AI workshops with AWS. Last but not least is that we've been talking about Carpenter for a second, as I just mentioned. And so this last one is just a blog that talks about how to use Carpenter and EKS together to scale the AI training and inference jobs if you're not using something like SageMaker to do it. This is particularly about a drug discovery startup that is, has a mission to create innovative AI driven technologies. And so this blog post is going to dive into that in detail and basically show you how to use Carpenter to drive these kind of inference training setups, particularly on the EKS setup. Uh, the EKS cluster. As always, we have our sources at the bottom, so you can always go take a look at the weekly roundup yourself. Some of this, by the way, is pulled from the AWS newsletter. Some of it is passed to me by word of mouth, so I hope you find this useful. Again, it's Michael Forrester here. We'll release another one next month. Please let me know if you want something different or if you want to see something, a focus or a deep dive. Otherwise, we will catch you at the next update next month. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button. We will see you at next month's update.